So I'm in Edinburgh again, and right behind me you can see the Writers Museum. This is Lady Stairs Close. It's actually the old town of Edinburgh. And I always think it's one of the most impressive and kind of most beautiful part. But today I'm actually here to take you to Gladstone's land, which is a National Trust for Scotland site. And if you're a member, you can go to it for free. For now I'm gonna take you around and get you some more information. Well, hi, I'm Lydia. I'm a visitor services supervisor here at Gladstone's Land with the National Trust for Scotland. I've been here for about a year and a half now. So this is Gladstone's Land and it is one of the oldest houses on the Royal Mile. It goes back in part to 1617, the front extension where we are, and then the back even to 1501 or possibly even further, we're not quite sure because records are a bit hazy at this point. Gladstone's Land gets its name from Thomas Gladstone, who bought the building in the early 17th century. The National Trust acquired it in the 1930s, and it was one of the first buildings in our portfolio. It took the better part of the 20th century to restore it as well, because it was quite run down at that point. It was actually very close to being demolished, unfit for human habitation, the council called it. So um, yeah, restoration took a little while, but we found a lot of treasures. Some of the artefacts that were found during this period included the accounts and records of a certain John Somerville, who was a merchant tailor that lived in the building. The records that they found from John Somerville indicate that he was an investor into the ill-fated Darien expedition, something that apparently he never managed to retrieve his wealth from. John Somerville took residence in Virginia where unfortunately he died heavily indebted, almost certainly because of the Darien expedition losses. I mean, it's a sad story, but it's far from the only one, of course. Many people lost pretty much everything. In fact, the losses from the Darien expedition almost entirely bankrupted Scotland. Some £400,000 was invested in the Darien Expedition, which at the time equated to nearly half the actual capital value held in Scotland. It was that experience that actually led to the union with England, though not without some coercion we did manage to bring it back up to its full beauty. The painted ceilings, of course, are the big, the big draw and the big treasure that we found. So we have revamped the whole building and the whole visitor experience in 2020. We now have a cafe down on the ground floor that is um, wheelchair accessible, that serves coffee, tea, cakes, ice cream, milkshakes, and boozy shakes as well for um, the connoisseur. The grown-ups. <laughs> yeah, for grown-ups. <laughs> and of course, above is the visitor experience that we've now expanded. And then we have our holiday flats as well that you can rent out self-catering in the oldest part of the building and then right above us here. Beautiful views of course and it's a bit of bragging rights to have stayed in one of the oldest houses on the Royal Mile. We do specialty tours too, we have a history of tea tour, history of food tour, an intimate live tour which is 16 plus also for the grown-ups um, and of course some specialty events throughout the whole year just starting up with a hidden history tour, a little bit of a dark ghostly spooky tour as well. So let's take a look inside and see what Gladstone's land has to offer the visitor. In 1620, a gentleman called Thomas Gladstone bought that original house and then he extended it out from there to the street front now in the 1620s for the whole of the house. So he bought it as a, what today we would say was a buy to let basically. He, wanted, he was going to run it as a business. He wasn't a particularly successful landlord, shall we say. He used the building as collateral for loans. He eventually had to sell some of the floors. In the, going with the sort of history of Edinburgh, this part of town from the 1600s onwards started to go basically down market until the 19, 1934 when the building was condemned. 
and that's when the National Trust stepped in. They primarily bought the property because of what it looks like on the ground floor with the arches, because Edinburgh used to have a sort of a colonnade that you used to walk under the buildings, which on a day like this would be great. <laughs> <laughs> and then when they actually bought it and started to dismantle it, they found a painted ceiling, which had been plastered over. So those painted ceilings that we were talking about, and everyone's quite impressed about, really, date back to around 1620, so they're definitely not the oldest part of the building by any chance. But they're still pretty old. One thing that's quite interesting about them, though, is that they do hold quite a lot of Christian iconography, although it is quite hidden. The reason for that, of course, is that at the time, the idea of having Christian iconography on display was a bit of a no-go. Scotland had turned very Calvinist in nature, thanks to John Knox. And so the artwork that adorns those ceilings reflects that ethos that had taken over Scotland in a fervour that was far more profound than their southern neighbours in England. So that was great. So over the years the Trust has exhibited the house in various different ways. At the moment it's exhibited of a different year in the house's history on each floor. And on this floor we're talking about <clears throat> the most recent time, 1911, which is a year where there's a census available so we know from that year that a lady called Mary Wilson um, owned one of the floors, it's difficult to tell which one it was, but we've laid it out as this floor, um, and she ran it as a boarding house, which was quite a common thing for ladies to run. She was a widow, and it was a sort of semi-respectable job for a woman to have, a widow woman to have. Master of the house and his wife and the kids would use it for eating, and they use it for living purposes. And yeah. this is the sort of food that they will be eating, we're showing you this, for lots of oysters, because oysters were cheap. Yeah. Everybody drank beer, even yeah. the kids, because it was healthier. So, you know, you could play games from this table, you've got cards laid out there, you might play dice, you might smoke a pipe. Plates would, were um, pewter. Um, the rich would eat off pewter, which was sort of frightfully good for them because of the lead, but never mind. <laughs> It was a prestige thing. So you can see we've got more of the decoration left here. We've got this a third of our very fine ceilings. Um, this is probably the best preserved one. If you look there, you can see the sort of slightly classical things. You've got the amphora, the vases, and the triglyphs running across the bottom. Well, we've got these little pull-out beds underneath. Okay. So you've got a, a cradle there. Um, the kids, you'll probably pull out the kids' beds underneath um, at night. Because we have no plumbing, there is a commode by the side of the bed. Mm -hmm. It was the maid's duty to look after the commode. Furniture here is there's very strong Dutch influence at this time. Um, so some of the furniture is Dutch. The story goes, it was given to um, an East Coast cat um, sailor who rescued a Dutch captain. Historically, trade went across the North Sea. Mm. I mean, it only started to go from Glasgow when America became important. So this is why we have this very strong North Sea, Dutch, French um, and Scandinavian links, because that's the way Scotland worked. So if you're interested in visiting Gladstone's Land and any of the other amazing sites that are available with the National Trust of Scotland, then I've included a link below to their membership, which is incredibly affordable. It can be paid for monthly for less than the cup of coffee and cake, and really is worth getting if you have the opportunity to get around and see enough sites. Enough probably being about three sites in a year and it would have paid for itself. So yet again, there's a link down below. And if you did enjoy this, then please leave a like and subscribe and come tune in for next Sunday when I'll be south of the border, out of Scotland and actually going closer to my hometown until then, have a great day.